What's going on guys? My name is Ben. Welcome to my review on the 2019 BMW 440i X-Drive. This car is, of course, comes with the M Performance Package. It has 320 horsepower, eight speed automatic gearbox. The manufacturer claims to have 31 highway miles, miles per gallon and 21 city miles. I'm excited for this car um, just because it's the Grand Coupe. I have the six series Grand Coupe and love it. So I, it's only natural that I kind of draw towards the name. Uh, BMW has really good marketing towards this and this is one of those cars that have the hatch in the back and it's extended coupe version so you have the exposed glass on the door frame now during this review I'm pretty much just gonna go over my basic um, view of the car um, I've had it now for about a week and a half really got a good chance to drive it in different terrain right now I'm just cruising so let's start off with the exterior exterior of the car definitely I think is the most attractive selling point of the car it's the 4 series so it's in the middle between the 3 series and the 5 series the main difference on the Grand Coupe model which is this model is the fact that it has that hatchback and the two seats in the back versus the coupe in uh, the sedan version my favorite part about the exterior is the hatchback part it adds more cargo space it looks really sleek and, all, and it honestly doesn't look like a, what's called a station wagon. Definitely looks more like a sedan that people hardly notice um, besides the people that already know what car it is. The car overall, looks wise, isn't terribly different. It's a little bit than the 3 Series. It's uh, very similar, a um, little bit more aggressive. The 4 Series itself is somewhat newer to BMW. It's relatively new. It has the M Sport steering wheel with the paddle shifters. Again, it's an eight speed uh, automatic gearbox. Um, definitely the power is there when you need it. Even on the low end, the turbo lag isn't too you know, dominant. So, but it's still there, you can still feel it. Um, in the corners, the car handles pretty well. Uh, I do, it's not the M4 by any means. They should make a, a M4 Grand Coupe. I think that would be, I think that'd be brilliant for BMW. And what makes it interesting is that BMW pretty much has a car for everybody. It's a one series, two series, three series, four series, five series, six series, seven series, eight series. You get the point. The car does have performance package, um, which if I'm gonna be honest, I don't really notice the difference. It's not the fastest car. You don't really get any exhaust note. Right now I'm driving in sport note. You know, let me step on the gas a little bit. So you definitely hear a little bit of that punch, but you know, it's definitely missing exhaust note. Granted, with aftermarket parts, you can beef up the exhaust, but um, it's still nothing like the M4, even with the performance package in this model. This is the all-wheel drive model, so it does um, grip the corners a little bit better. The stock tires on this car are pretty narrow. There's 225 millimeter tires on here, and this is the 19 inch tires, which is the performance tires for the series. Overall, it doesn't wow me. Um, the car definitely has um, it's more of the comfort, sport, and luxury kind of mixing together with trying to be a more uh, economy friendly vehicle as opposed to the bigger uh, brother 5 series, 6 series, etc. Um, if I were to buy this car, the Grand Coupe, I probably wouldn't. I would go for the coupe, try to go for the manual. In this Grand Coupe version, they honestly, they don't make a manual, so um, that's something to consider. The thing I do like about the interior is Bose carbon fiber. Um, looks very nice. The Alcantara, not the biggest fan of. I know as Alcantara gets older, it definitely kind of ages bad, but especially with it being primarily on the dash, and that's right in front of your passenger's face, and they get to see it as it ages. Um, I would skip that off. I really like the interior. It's it's definitely grown on me, but brand new, it looks phenomenal. So you can't really complain about that. BMW does a great job with placing 
the instrument cluster in a certain area. So I understand where the volume is at, uh, understand where the, the, the climate control is at. Even the eye dry system has, over the years, gotten better and better. A relatively new person at BMW can sit in this car, become familiar really quickly. With interior, I love the black headliner. Again, I'm a fan of that in cars. It definitely makes the car feel more of a cockpit feel. But the 4 Series to me is a little awkward. It's, you know, it's, it's this, the base starting price for this car is $50,000. Compare that to used BMWs, you can get easily the older gen um, four door M3. You can get many, many different, I, I don't need to go into the options because I know if you're watching this video, you're considering buying this car and you're probably looking at used options too as well, just to compare. But if you're going brand new, this car is, you know, it's decent. Um, give it a few years, let the price drop a little bit. I think this that's the type of market this car will fall under. Would personally buy this car more used and brand new and spend the $50,000 sticker price. Stability wise, this car definitely, um, the seats are comfortable, soft touch leather here. From what I understand, you can only change the colors but not change the material itself. But still, comfortable, straight to the point, has a little bit of a luxury feel to it. Definitely doesn't push the bar, but it definitely meets the expectations of what you want to find in a BMW. One thing I do find awkward is as I drive, my leg naturally, I'm six feet, my leg naturally wants to not sit in the natural position against uh, the dead pedal, but instead be raised. And I find it a lot, I'm bumping into the steering wheel. It's a little awkward kind of finding that comfortable position. So um, I do find the the back seat to be a little tight, but then again, it is a compact four door, so you're not gonna get the most spacious back seats, but you can fit two people back there. Another thing I'd like, exposed um, glass as you open the door. I love that feature. I think it just looks a lot better. It looks a lot more sleek, modern kind of style. Subtle things that will make you choose the four series over the three series. And then again, BMW, you know, with so many models, they share a lot of the same features, a lot of the same technology. This car overall is uh, is very clean. The navigation system, you know, pretty much standard BMW. The screen's a little small. I feel like they could have enlarged it a little bit, but it's easy to use, easy to get to media, connect your phone to Bluetooth. The rear view camera looks very great backing up. You know, the creature comforts in this car, BMW spends millions and millions of dollars um, try to perfect it and make it, you know, the ultimate driving machines that, as they advertise. But I feel over the years, as they get more and more modern, it definitely stands apart from Mercedes and Lexus and other companies in their own way, but yet have very similar uh, function. This car definitely feels a lot lighter than the bigger 5 Series and 6 Series. As it hugs corners, it feels like it can actually keep up if you take it to the track. Um, the power is not there. Of course, you can do aftermarket modifications to give it more power. But I think as just a base car, um, this is your classic BMW. It's what you expect when you spend $50,000. It, it, it comes ready to go, just to enjoy. The steering wheel between the sport and comfort mode, really not much of a difference. The response is still pretty immediate. Now this car, to me, I feel like this is the city car. I don't feel like this is a long commute car. It definitely has the comfort. Doesn't really have the performance for me, but for majority of people, it's you know, it's what you need. It's just, it, it gets up and go. It has the turbo, uh, the single turbo in this car. 320 horsepower, which is plenty. But if you get in the Grand Coupe version, it doesn't come with the manual. So, you know, take it or leave it pretty much. I'm pretty sure in BMWs, the manuals are going to be dying out, um, especially in the non-M cars. This car basically has a, the same mechanics, the same operation. You could choose between the engine sizes um, to what better works for you. Um, overall, you know, it has your Bluetooth, it has your backup cameras, has the integrated navigation, it has pretty much all the smart uh, creature comforts that you need in the vehicle, um, especially in 2019. In comfort mode, you just kind of cruise along. Sport mode, the steering isn't too much different. You don't notice a whole lot more, but I do feel like when you do engage the corners, it's a little bit more active, a little bit more responsive. These themselves are comfortable. I'm six foot and sit in the cabin pretty well. 
again the LED headlights on our front um, with the black kidney grills um, the exterior of this car is definitely really pretty that's probably the biggest selling feature for me for this car, for the 4 series is the looks over the 3 series and how the lines come together I think that BMW did a really good job merging the 5 series in the 3 series to make this kind of 4 series hybrid baby I guess <laughs> in my opinion BMW has some of the best heads up display features um, this one doesn't has as many options as it does in my um, 6 series uh, but it does have the speed limit and then also the speed you're doing and when you do the media controls it tells you what song you're playing if you're playing off your phone and stuff like that I think that's really cool um, other heads up displays I've seen in other cars very uh, diluted not very visible and this one you can kind of control where it's positioned in the car and then also the brightness too as well and if you just don't like it you can always just take it off but why would you do that there's a lot I expect out of a, a car that has an MSRP sticker tag of $50,000 especially knowing what I can get for $50,000 in a used car um, that's just my terminology you can either agree with it or not but that's how I think about it What's going on guys um basically my camera died so i apologize about that but thank you for watching the video please subscribe let me know if you have uh, any comments or anything that you would like to add or any cars that you think i should probably go test drive again subscribe if you haven't already click the thumbs up let me know what you think all right see you later guys bye